What I came up with um, as a possible useful way of, of using um, the G Drive connector uh, is that uh, we have a workflow in our business um, where we take, uh, probably not that uncommon, we take um, work we do for clients and we try to bill for it. Um, and, you know, we've gone over, we've gone through a different a variety of different ways of managing that uh, over the years. And, um, the, um, the, the way we're doing it now is a combination, kind of a, a combination of tools. Um, we we're, we've had a real successful migration to using teamwork, uh, for project management over the last uh, year and a half, two years. And so now we're, uh, capturing all our time in, uh, in teamwork, uh, and still need to invoice for it. And, for a variety of reasons, we're doing that in a little bit of a manual way. We import, I import that into, into a FileMaker app and, and manage the, the time out of, uh, out of there. And um, so what I did, uh, what I thought about is um, tweaking how we do our, our process there. And instead of archiving um, time detail reports to uh, a folder on my hard drive, I thought about um, archiving them to uh, our, our Google workspace. So that led me to um, starting to look at this uh, at this flow here um, that I called G Drive Upload File. Um, but before I get too far into that, I'm going to step back out to my um, project um, and take a quick look at. Um, I'm just going to create a temporary flow and um, trigger it with a uh, Claris trigger. I'm just blowing past this because I want to look at the. Um, the, the, connect, the actions available in the, in the G drive connector. So these are all of the actions that I can perform with the G drive connector, um, upload file, create folder, find folder, find file, um, et cetera. Um, so in my uh, little goofing around with this connector, I'm, imp I'm implementing the, um, the find folder, create folder and upload file actions. So stepping back out to my flow, See here, I'm going to delete my temporary flow. Um, here's my flow. So I started out doing this with a uh, FileMaker trigger. Um, I, I decided early on to, to use a series of if statements. So my, my uh, trigger from FileMaker is passing in an operation variable, um, this guy here. And my flow in, in Claris Connect is testing that operation and deciding which of the three actions to take, whether to find a folder, create a folder, or um, upload the file. Um, I'd started out with a FileMaker connector, I'm sorry, FileMaker trigger, um, but ran immediately up against um, the problem that um, I think probably affects a lot of FileMaker driven triggers and, and the workaround's easy, so it's not a big deal, but um, the FileMaker trigger doesn't allow you to return much in the way of data. Um, so I really couldn't, it really didn't do me a lot of, of good. Um, so I pretty quickly switched to using a webhook. Um, and that allows me to get, use the um, receive JSON response uh, webhook uh, to send data back to FileMaker so that I could get my uh, folder that I wanted to send the data to. So the, the way uh, I did this flow is that the first thing it does is my um, my workflow in, in FileMaker is to store my time detail reports in a folder named for the month. So in, in the case of November, it would be called NOV21. So my first step um, in my flow is to use the, um, the find folder action um, to find my uh, November 21 folder. Um, so my, my action uses the folder name that I passed in in my webhook. That's the, this bit of JSON right here. So I'm just um, grabbing it right here. Wherever it is. Well, the last time that, that webhook ran, it didn't pass in a folder name, so it's not showing it there, but um, that's, that uh, piece of information is coming from the first call to this uh, flow from, from FileMaker. The, um, 
that's pretty straightforward. It searches um, it searches Google Drive for the my folder name and returns uh, a drive ID or a, a file ID um, to FileMaker via this reply with JSON data uh, flow step. Pretty straightforward. Um, my script and FileMaker, which I'm not going to bother going over to, uh, my script and FileMaker then tests whether or not I got um, any data back. Um, if Connect was able to find the folder, it, it's going to send back the folder ID. If it's not, it's sending back a null value. Um, and I know then that I have to create the folder. So I'm uh, then calling this flow again with the create operation and um, then uh, creating the folder with the same folder name that I used in the previous step. Pretty uh, straightforward at this point. Um, one problem I did run into here is that um, it's not really a problem right here, but in other areas it will be. And that is that um, unlike FileMaker and, and the operating system, um, Google Docs, uh, G Drive doesn't care if you have multiple copies of the same file name. Um, so I could have 10 folders called NOV21 and Google Docs, uh, G Drive would be perfectly happy. Um, so if you're if you're doing anything where you where you're hoping that that you'll just be replacing something that's up at G Drive, that's not going to happen. You're you're going to have to uh, manage that yourself. Um, check to see if it's there ahead of time. Get get rid of it if if it is, um, and re-upload whatever it is. I I didn't find this to be a problem with creating the folder since I was already doing a find for it. But down here where I'm actually uploading the file, um, for my purposes, I would have preferred that that uh, my original copy of the file just get overwritten by the new copy rather than having to manually deal with that. Um, not that I'm at, I'm actually, I haven't actually got that far with this flow um, to deal with it, um, but eventually I will have to if I keep working on it. So at this point I've, um, I've used find folder and create folder to, um, to create the folder on Google Drive um, that I wanna put my November invoice detail reports into. Um, so now I'm in FileMaker, I'm calling my, my flow one more time with the uh, upload operation. Um, so on the, on the FileMaker side, what I've done is, is my script that creates my report has run and it has saved my report PDF to my, my hard drive. And now I'm trying to upload that to G Drive uh, with this last bit of this, uh, this flow. Um, there's a couple of things I ran into with that um, that I was able to solve. And one thing that I've run into so far that I have not been able to solve, and um, I'll go over that next. Um, the first uh, issue I ran into is that the upload file um, flow step here uh, expects a URL. So uh, Claris Connect wants to be able to download the the file that it's going to send to G Drive, it wants to download it via a, a URL, and so the question becomes, how do I provide Claris Connect with a, a download URL it can use for this container field data I have in FileMaker? And at first, I thought, well, maybe I'm going to have to like save it to the hard drive and use uh, web publishing or uh, to to be able to provide a, a URL. Um, fortunately, there's an easier workaround, and I think this got talked about during the S3 presentation last month. Um, the workaround is uh, a little bit simpler. All I have to do is pass into Claris Connect uh, some data that allows me to call back into FileMaker from Connect to the data API to find the record where my data is so that I can grab the container field data through the data API. So that's what I'm doing here. My, my upload script step um, starts out with this find record command. Now, in my case, I'm stuffing this container field data into a single record table. There is only one record in this table. And so I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm passing the value of one into Claris Connect. Um, actually, I'm not even passing the value of one. I'm just doing a query against the table I want in FileMaker with the value of one for that field, for the one field, and finding my one record. Um, if I was 
doing something more complicated where I was trying to find um, a record in a table that had lots of records in it. Obviously, I'd, I'd have to pass in a record ID or something so that Claris Connect could find the right record. In my case, though, I didn't have to do that. So that gives um, that that gives Claris Connect access to the record in um, in FileMaker, uh, and the nice thing is um, that FileMaker is providing Claris Connect in that situation with a URL in my container field position. So if I, if I look at a little bit of history of uh, calls to this Connect uh, flow, I can see um, an example of this, hopefully. So here's um, an execution of this um, if clause um, in my flow step. And I can see the response from my find record flow step right here. So this is what FileMaker sent back to Claris Connect. And I can see right here my field data uh, that, uh, that file, the FileMaker data API sent back. Most of the fields are empty, but my container field uh, where I stuffed my um, Temp where I temporarily stuffed my PDF file has a URL in it um, that I can then use from Claris Connect to, to download from, from my FileMaker app. Um, you might have noticed this table is called globals. Um, and that might clue you into the fact that um, a lot of the fields in this table are globals. Um, I started out with this field being a global because I wasn't thinking very carefully. Um, and when I asked Kate what, he, what she thought my problem was, she said, well, I don't think globals will work in this situation. <laughs> um, so I was only getting an empty string here, uh, which sort of makes sense since globals are session, session based. Um, so I ended up changing that to a, not be a global um, and that fixed my, my problem here. Now I'm getting a valid URL back um, from FileMaker and I can go back to my, my flow here uh, and go into my upload file script or file upload file flow step. So I've got my parent folder ID from my find folder flow step, and I've got my URL for um, I've got my URL for downloading the file uh, into Connect so that Connect can pass it through to G Drive, um, and I've got the file name that I want to call that file up on on G Drive, and um, you would think this would all work. And this is this is where I've uh, I reached my limit of time availability availability before today's meetup. Um, this does not in fact not work. Um, I actually do get a file uh, over to um, G Drive, but the file uh, looks like this here. I guess it's not going to show it to me as PDF. The file, what the file has in it is just um, a, a super basic little bit of HTML that says not authorized. Um, so when I run this flow step, um, upload file, um, for some reason, the, and, and we've not come up with a good reason for this, either oh, prob probably FileMaker is responding to the attempt to well, if you just stick the URL in a web browser, you get not authorized. So FileMaker, for some reason, thinks the URL that's being passed back from this find record script step um, that I shouldn't be able to download that file.